Hey, what's up? It's Jared with State of Tech. Today, I wanted to talk about the best Wear OS smartwatches to buy in 2018. Now, Google uh, renamed Android Wear to Wear OS by Google. Uh, the rebranding kind of brought the product line into more of a Google product uh, or a Google software, kind of like Chrome OS is Google and whatnot, instead of having something that was separate. Like Android kind of became this thing where it's like, yes, Android is Google, but it, uh, um, it kind of became its own thing. And I think Google is kind of bringing some of their products back into the whole Google brand, um, which is good. I mean, you know, Google has done that. Um, there hasn't been any smartwatches on the Google store in a while, which is kind of a bummer. Uh, and it made me think like I was wondering if if Google was going to get away from smartwatches altogether. But with the new version of Wear OS coming out, the rebranding and all that stuff, uh, it lets me know that they're good to go. I mean, uh, I'm pretty excited. And I like Android watches or Wear OS watches as they will be known now. Um, I, uh, I think that uh, there's some good watches to be had still, even though there hasn't been a lot of new stuff coming out. Uh, there hasn't been, you know, a bunch of new releases like there was in the past. But there is a huge list of watches that um, the manufacturer said are going to be updating. And there's a list of those. I'll put a link in the description below. There's a list of all of those watches over on the State of Tech website for you to check out. Now, I only have uh, in, my, in my possession two of these watches. I have had all four. Uh, so two of these watches I'll be able to show you. And then I'm going to reference things from other videos that I've put out in the past on the other watches. So let's jump right in into this. Uh, I have four watches I'm going to talk about today. And uh, for those of you interested in the specs and all the details and additional links that I have to go along with this, make sure to check out the link in the description below on stateoftech.net. We've got all that stuff. So the first is the LG Watch Sport. Now I don't have that pictured here, but I bought it right when it first came out because it's just a beautiful looking watch. It has a premium look and feel, uh, nice stainless steel, um, just a beautiful looking watch. And it came in an LTE variant uh, so that I could get it connected to LTE and I can use it out and about when I don't want to carry my phone on me. I liked that. I liked the uh, fact that I could sync Bluetooth headphones to it and listen to music, streaming music straight from the watch uh, over the LTE network, not having to have my phone take any part in that. It was definitely a cool experience. Um, the uh, LG watch, I think, has a really nice UI. Uh, LG uh, opted to kind of add a little bit of their own user experience and the skin over the top of what was uh, uh, Android Wear and now is Wear OS, and it's just a good watch. I mean, it has uh, it checks all the right boxes, you know, with its IP68 uh, certification. Um, you know, it has a nice display on it, uh, nice processor, good battery life. I mean, it has kind of the biggest battery of all of the watches that I'll be talking about today. Um, and so all the features are great. It's a great watch. I just, I decided not to hang on to it because I had switched back to an iPhone. And right now my daily driver is my, my iPhone and my Apple watch. However, um, I'm going to, I'm going to get into these two watches as well that I have here, um, and talk more about them. So the LG sport watch, I have a full review of that. Um, I just added the card to the video so you could have clicked on that. Or, uh, of course on the state of tech post, there's a link to the video so you can check out my full review. It's definitely a fantastic watch um, and it's only gotten better with software updates so definitely check uh, check that out so the second one is going to be the Huawei watch 2 this is the Huawei watch 2 here um, and this is the sport configuration I decided to go sport because I wanted uh, a band that would withstand maybe a little bit of sweating uh, if I wear this to the gym or do any type of physical activity I'm gonna sweat a little bit um, and I just wanted I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to swap out the bands very easily uh, because some of these watches you can't do that. Like the LG Sport Watch, if you have the LG or the LTE variant, you can't swap out the bands because uh, it uses the bands for the LTE antenna. This version of the watch, and I'm not sure, this is not the LTE version of the Huawei watch. This is just the standard version. Um, you can remove the watch straps. You can uh, use additional watch straps, even though I wasn't sure if you would because of the overlapping here in the, um, in the watch strap design. 
so you can change this out. Uh, just standard watch straps are going to work. So I found that to be interesting. And I did kind of play around with that. But I did keep going back to the standard watch straps. The only thing I don't like is that this watch does not do a good job of like, I mean, you can't you can't set it up or set it flat. You have to lay it on its side, which I guess is okay because when you have the charging connector uh, connected to it, um, it, it can kind of sit there and act as a little clock. Uh, this watch does have a, um, a heart rate monitor. Of course, the uh, uh, most of these watches do have a heart rate monitor. It's one of the things that I find uh, I would want as a standard issue item in these watches. Um, this watch here, I mean, there isn't really a whole lot of difference other than the display is a little smaller than, uh, most of the other watches. The, um, LG, the other watches I'm going to mention, this only has a 1.2 inch AMOLED screen. Uh, it does have a pretty pixel dense screen though at 326 PPI. Um, that's pretty good. Of course, the, um, uh, the LG had a bigger screen, 1.38 inch at 348 P, uh, PPI. So higher PPI, higher screen size. Um, the next one we're going to take a look at is the Asus ZenWatch 3. Now, um, Asus, I, that was one of the first watches, smart watches that I had was an Asus and an LG, uh, the LG G watch. And I can't remember the ZenWatch or the Asus model. Um, but the Asus ZenWatch 3 has uh, pretty good specs, you know, I mean, it's a big display at 1.39 inch uh, AMOLED 287 PPI. It's not as dense as the other watches, but still pretty good. Um, it has, uh, you know, a good battery life, 340 milliamp battery. Um, pretty good watch overall. Uh, Asus has definitely had uh, watches pretty much the entire time. They keep continuing to update their watch uh, models. But the thing that has always, I've, it's always been a conflict with me and Asus is that the Asus watches um, and the Asus phones tend to kind of skimp in one way or another to be like a decently priced device. Um, now the Zen Watch 3 definitely isn't the cheapest watch that's on the, on the, uh, that's out there, but they also have like their Zen phone and their Zen phone is not a full feature phone. It's kind of a medium phone, medium price and all that stuff. So Asus is good. I mean, they've been good on software updates, just like Huawei has and LG. Um, and you know, they're keeping it current, which is great. I don't think, uh, necessarily that, um, I mean, Asus has the, I, the Zen Watch has the IP67 certification, so it's not as high as the other two as far as uh, as your uh, uh, your potential to submerge it or whatever get it wet um, IP67 is one of those gray areas where yeah you could get it wet but you wouldn't want to submerge it for very long if at all so the last watch we're going to talk about is the Nixon mission now this I think is actually the oldest of the watches but it still has current specs and everything and I'm including it because I have it, and I think for the right person, it's a fantastic watch. Um, now, it doesn't have a uh, heart rate monitor like the other watches do. This one has a heart rate monitor. This one does not. This watch is huge. I mean, even look at it in comparison to the Apple Watch. This is the large Apple Watch. This is a huge watch. I'm including it because I'm a guy, and I like big watches. I like watches that look uh, you know, relatively decent on my wrist. I mean, this watch is big and it fits my wrist well. I've had other Nixon watches that are of this style. So when they decided to come out with a smartwatch version, I was super excited about it. It doesn't have all of the features that I like in a smartwatch. It's very limited as this watch is more geared towards surfing and ski sports, snowboarding and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, you get a lot of stuff there. However, this watch is way more waterproof than the other ones. The other watches are, you know, IP67, IP68. This is something, um, something called 10 ATM waterproof, which means it could go 100 meters down underwater, uh, waterproof, not water resistant. Like if you took it to 100 meters, it would be questionable. Like this watch is tested to survive at 100 meters. So this watch definitely uh, is a lot more durable and uh, available to do a lot more than the other watches. Um, it has a microphone here and it has this seal on the side that you pop loose. I have a full review of this watch. I'm not going to go completely into detail here. Um, all of these watches I have full reviews on. Uh, and so, you know, you can check out the links over at stateoftech.net on that. But this seal and the way that everything is sealed on here is a lot better than the other watches. 
I also like the large display. It's a really bright display. Uh, they continue to keep it updated, but there are things that it just doesn't have. Like it doesn't have NFC, so you can't do any mobile payments. It doesn't have the heart rate monitor. It, there's just things that it doesn't have. It does have a GPS like all the other watches. It does have, you know, uh, some of the other um, uh, uh, sensors that the other watches have, but it just, it doesn't check all the boxes. And this is the most expensive of the watches as well. So if you're more of an extreme person, this would be the watch for you versus the other watches, which are more for everyday use. So the best overall watch I had to decide was the LG watch, the LG Sport watch. The LG Sport watch just checked all the boxes. Um, it had all the features that I would expect in a watch in 2018. Uh, you know, I think that the LG watch just is all around a better looking watch. Um, Android, or I guess Wear OS, or Android Wear, doesn't have a whole lot of a style to it. It's very basic, and uh, there isn't just there isn't much to it. So LG adding a little bit of their own UI to it definitely made it look a little bit nicer, a little bit more premium. And I think that's kind of what I was going for was, you know, what's a little bit more premium of an experience? I like the stainless steel, even though it's a slightly different material than all three of these other watches are made out of. Um, the stainless steel, the other ones are stainless steel. This one's just a different stainless steel. It has that polished or that brushed look. I, I guess it's more of a brushed look, not so much polished. Um, but it just looks like a more premium watch. Um, it, it really, though, does come down to features and style. And most of them do have all the same features with the exception of the Nixon mission. So style is what's left. And so if style is important to you, it really is just about what watch uh, is best going to look good on your wrist. If you have like a Best Buy or something like that nearby, you might want to go and try these watches on and just see what looks best for you. If you don't have a Best Buy nearby, there are Amazon links down below for you so you can check out the pricing and availability on all these watches. All the specs and all the information is located at stateoftech.net in the link that's down below in the description. So I hope that you check that out. Uh, so 2018, of course, we're just getting underway. We haven't met, uh, had a Google I.O. this year or anything like that. So there's lots to be uh, coming out this year, especially with Google uh, rebranding Android Wear to Wear OS. So let me know what your thoughts are. What do you think is the best watch that's available in 2018? Hopefully that's getting updates uh, here with Wear OS in 2018. Let me know down in the comment section below and click on that subscribe button to be notified when we put out new videos. I hope to see you back here soon on State of Tech.